So ever wonder what the three pillars are that you need in order to you know, really, really tap into the client acquisition part of your business? Because look, without a solid client acquisition uh, system or framework, you will basically be spinning your wheels a lot. You'll be sending out thousands and thousands of messages per day and you would not know why what you're doing is working or why what you're doing isn't working. So this is what today's video is about. It's simply about a client acquisition mental model that you can take off of this video. You know, you can copy and you can model it off of this video and you can implement it into your business. So there are three main pillars that we're going to look at inside of this mental model today. So firstly, it's like a triangle, you know, an effective client acquisition model has three sides. And if one side is missing, you know, it, the triangle, etc., cetera, the, the triad won't work, right? So we have messaging, we have funnel, and we have offer here with inside of this triad. So the offer is, is the first thing that we are going to look at. So we must start here, you know, focusing on your messaging and then we, it rolls over to your funnel and then to your channel specific, right? Because without an, a solid offer in place, try, it's like trying to sit on a chair on water. It doesn't matter what chair you use, you're going to sink, right? So if your offer isn't unbelievably strong, your business will sink, right? Despite the channel that you're using and despite the ad copy, right? So if you look at this, uh, if you look at this photo here, you know, can you say no to this face? Would you? Would you say no to this offer? I don't know. Some would, some wouldn't. But anyways, you guys get the whole idea, right? So the first thing that we uh, will, you know, drill it down into, pop up the, the sub uh, bullets here is steps to creating an uh, uh, offer prospects specifically that, that they say yes to without even needing to sell them, right? So niche specific, the niche is who you serve, right? Now, this is where you start because this is, only in the, this is the only independent variable in the entire offer equation. So meaning every offer variable is dependent on your niche. So typically the niche is the vertical in which you have the most, you know, industry experience in or, you know, it's based on who you once were or the activities you once did and you build up some kind of experience, right? So meaning if you used to be like broke and had no direction in life, that could be your niche because you were once here, you did a bunch of things, now you popped out on the other side, you removed, a, uh, like you first figured out, okay, I, I solved this here. But then there was a problem here again because once you solve this, then there was this problem and then you solve this. But many times this whole solving order is, is juggled, right? A lot of times people try solving what is over here first before actually realizing that there's a problem that they need to solve here. So that's what we're looking at the whole transformation, right? So the transformation is of course dependent on the niche specific. So it's super valuable for one person, right? Uh, it, it's what may be super valuable for one person may not be valuable for the next. So we start with the niche and that's how we figure out. And then you'd be like, okay, what is extremely valuable to this specific person, right? Because in order to get your message over, to someone, you need to be able to be do, you need to be good at doing a certain something so that you become the person that people will go to for a piece of advice, right? Or if you just target the whole globe, no one is going to listen to you because one, your market message is, it's, it's going to be everywhere. You're going to be talking about this. You're going to be talking about that. And there's no real direction. So that's a, that's a big problem, right? So the best transformation for you to deliver is the one you've already made, right? So for an example, when I first started this whole uh, consulting line within Selfful Systems, I consulted on fitness professionals, right? On how to go from zero to around 10K, you know, per month with their online fitness business. So I don't focus on doing this anymore, but I got really, really good at doing that, right? So now selfplsystems.io helps entrepreneurs between $10,000 and $50,000 per month to ramp up to 50 to even 250K per month with their done for you coaching or their service-based model. That's what we do. So if you look at who you were one to two years ago, right? Typically, that's a great niche to go because after that initial change and the things you did and what you went through, you, you understood, you know, there was these certain skills and acquisition that you had to go and acquire. Then there was this phase of uh, mastery. 
right? And mastery is a lifelong, but there was a, there was a certain period where you were absolutely crap at what you were doing, but then you got better the more you did it, and the more you got kicked in the teeth, the better you got, and the more you realized, okay, if I keep doing this for an X amount of time, I know these ROI driving activities is what will lead me to reaching this initial goal. So this is where you, you, you want to achieve the same transformation which you have achieved, right? So if you look at this bullet that we have here, if you would look at who you were one to two years ago, typically that's a great niche to go after because that same person will want to achieve the same transformation that you did because it does not matter what you look like. It does not matter if you have a beard, if you rock a neat, tight beard, it doesn't matter if you clean cut, it doesn't matter if you're in good shape as a person, you will attract a certain crowd. It, you can be into this type of thing or that type of thing and you will attract a certain crowd. Let me take an example here. You see this rain can over here? Now you get a monster can, you get a rain can. So the two differences specifically in comparison with each other is the, the same company created a product that was more targeted towards fitness people, right? Where you have the monster product and you then you have this rain product, which is more targeted towards fitness people. Why? Because they have all the fitness benefits in them, right? So the fitness people are attracted to them and the fitness people drink them. So that is a great, great example where you already have a product, but now a sub product is created where you are targeting a, uh, a sub niche or, or a different vertical. It's not a complete like 360 turn around all of a sudden, right? It's like there was this monster, they had this like the, the high performance type of sports and all of those things. And now they just had a little bit of a shift in vertical with a more focused vision and a focused scoped vision on fitness people, right? That's, that's the best example I have in front of me here right now, right? So here you have a little man that's packaged up and you want your stuff to be packaged and specific, right? So we're looking at price here. Now the next bullet we have is once you've determined your niche plus your transformation, you can now track, uh, you can determine a price and you can track a price. So specifically you can, what most people will do is they will step into a field or into a niche and look what everyone around them is charging, which is not the right thing to do. You need to be aware of what people around you are charging but if you want to become the specialist, if you want to become the so-called uh, go-to guy in that field, you need to be able to have these mechanisms that places you in such a diverse and in such a unique way in a position in your market that people come to you because you're the only person, you're the best and only person that can solve their problem for them and you have the solution, you have built the solution. So that's why they come to you and they give you that premium pricing, right? So your price is dependent on the outcome, the transformation, your delivery and who your delivery, so who you're specifically targeting that delivered outcome to the niche, right? So example is we help coaches and agency owners or service-based businesses go, you know, get their offer really dialed in, you know, install client acquisition systems and we build all kinds of uh, systems that you need in your business. So client acquisition systems and infrastructure and we help them scale past their current bottleneck, whichever that might be, right? So that is the outcome slash the transformation. Now, if your niche is, is people who are at zero dollars and you help them to get to 10K, you could charge X amount. I, there's, a, there's a way that you can go about calculating this within the value that is actually added to the business, but that is a whole nother video. So, but if you have the same transformation for people who are already at 20K per month, and you can help them scale to 100K per month. With this niche, you could charge anywhere from three to four times uh, as, as of towards you're the person that working with people that do not have uh, essential funds yet, but you're helping them start up the business. You're helping them figure out the basis of the marketing. You're helping them do this. You're helping them do that, right? So that makes complete sense towards the amount of uh, ROI that will be received within the service that you have. And this is all uh, based on your, your, your value that you bring and then obviously the value that's derived, do you actually make the needle move, right? So mechanism. So if we look at mechanism, you can see we have a little cute little picture here of the, the little advanced uh, R2-D2 over here. So we, within the mechanism, we've, you, know, you've, you've, you finally you have your mechanism, right? So the mechanism is important because it's, it's, your, it's your way of doing that initial transformation, right? So the mechanism is dependent on the niche transformation and the price. Like all the mechanism is, 
is how you actually deliver that promise transformation, as I've just said, right? So for an example, the reason the mechanism is dependent on the price is because if you're charging a client $1,000, 1K, right? You don't have a lot of margin. So your solution must be cost effective. So $250 or lower, right? Conservatively. If you charge a client $10,000, like based on the same percentage of 25%, right? You're now providing a solution which costs around 2.5% if you look at the margin, right? So that's why that is important. So now if we roll over to, to some, you know, models, right? So for group coaching, there's a, there's a few ways you can go about this, but what is important here is this is the, you know, the, the typical course program where it's mass customers, where you rely on volume, right? So a lower price point within uh, this model. So key introductions here is great course content. So there's not much like external coaching needed to, you know, increase the initial sales, but it is the value that's the immediate value that's been derived off of as soon as you onboard someone, right? As soon as you have that first initial meeting, that is how also what is determined on how long the uh, initial LTV of the customer will be and how quicker the initial churn will be, right? So then we look at the community, right? Which is typically a Facebook group, a Telegram group, a WhatsApp group. It does not matter where, it could be a Discord group, right? So multiple weekly coaching calls, which is extremely important because that is what your main, besides everything you give to people, which is your course or whatever you give to people, that helps them, that educates them. Your main thing is the accountability. If you're a fitness coach, right? If you're a high performance coach, it does not matter. If you're a business coach, it does not matter. If you have, if your stuff is actually good and you've actually spent time doing it and you've proven that you have product market fit and you've proven that you actually have a solution that brings initial high value and ROI to your people, then your accountability will be the make break of your business. Because if you're actually in the field, if you're actually in the field and you're, you know, you're, you're, you're doing your practice rounds, right? You're, you're swapping to your secondary, all that stuff, right? If you're actually out there doing the work back to back with your people, then they will be able to have someone that can, they, they can look up to because you're actually out there doing the work. You're not just there pushing a course, right? That's why most people, if they start some kind of a program, they just think they're going to create something and they're going to sell it to people. That is a short-term game. If you play long-term games, you must figure out how you can provide real value to people. If you keep playing short-term games, so there's this thing that I learned, I can't remember exactly who it was, but it goes that if you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. I've heard someone say this. I've heard it from like, I guess someone like Alex Hormozzi, but he wasn't the original person who, who initiated that whole uh, quote. But it's the truth. It is just the truth because real value, it just smacks different, right? So the best for a relatively easy outcome, for example, is how to hit your first 10K month using insert a uh, specific business model, right? A common price point for this is anywhere between 2000. It, it, this could be anywhere from 2,500. I put 2,800 here, but this could be 2,500 to around 6,800, right? Now we're done with you. This model is best suited for you know, harder to achieve outcomes. And usually it's much higher ticket, right? And because it's higher ticket, the mechanism for delivery can be more effective because you have more cash to put into the fulfillment. It's as easy as that. So key inclusions here is one-on-one, -on -one, you know, you have some kind of a slack interaction with people. You have a dedicated coach. You have a high performance coach. You have this coach, you have that coach. You have great course, you know, great course content. You have professionals that come in. You have a community and a typically a Facebook group or a Telegram group, as I've said, right? Something that you can uh, introduce to your people, you can provide valuable content and you can nurture within the process. So then you have multiple weekly group coaching calls that are specifically topic based, right? So this, uh, this keeps people engaged and you keep pushing out effective quality content that actually drives ROI. So for an example, someone conscious go up, pop up the old YouTube machine, bang in that specific uh, type of video. You know what I mean? Like it, it's something that's actually value coming from an expert, right? So common price points could be anywhere from 5,800 to like just under 10K, right? And time frame here is usually around three to five months, dependable on what you, what you actually do, right? So anyway, we have some done for you, right? 
So now this can be a full offer or it can be an element of the offer. So for an example, setuplatsystems.io, we are a specific hybrid because we follow a specific uh, consulting model. We're a hybrid between done for you and done with you consulting. And this is because we have multiple avenues of delivery. We have the actual, the, we have some uh, training material that is super, super important, but that's not the actual thing that we deliver upon. That's like the bonus, right? That's like the bonus that we deliver upon. So our clients are entrepreneurs between five to $50,000 who want to scale to 150,000 to 250K with their done for you coaching offer or really any service-based business offer. So we work with them on their sales process, we, within their offer creation, recruiting, training, funnels, sales teams, and the whole ramping process. And we install systems and infrastructure processes that allows them to fill the calendar, right? And that we, we specifically help you fill the calendar. That's what where this whole thing comes in, right? So the done for you element to our offer is filling the specific calendars and within the done with you element is our offer is essentially, you know, everything else that's added onto it, right? So that is required to scale to 150K to 250K. Now I do apologize if you hear some dishes washed in the background, there's nothing I can do about that right now. I wanted to produce this video and this is where we are right now. So we're just gonna keep rolling. So offer elements to this highlight. So we have guarantees. So the more, if, uh, like the more creative you can be with your guarantees, the better, right? So if you do at least, um, if you don't at least 2x what our fee is, we'll refund you in full, no questions asked, no strings attached. So that's one of our uh, current guarantees that we're running, right? Th why can we give this guarantee? Because we're that confident. We're that confident. We have results. You know, the proof is in the pudding. We have results. We've worked with people in various different fields. And that is why we can say such a claim, right? If you can't back up your guarantee, it's no, it's, there's no use to having that sort of guarantee, right? So if you don't make at least 10K within the first 90 days, I'll buy your store from you, something like that. That could be niche specific, right? We guarantee to place you in a role that will pay you 10K in the first 30 days or less, or I'll pay you 10K, right? That's another one. So now additional bonuses here. Now I got this idea from Mac Miller. If you make this addition or the bonuses of your offer more valuable than the main offer itself by extension. Now, Mac Miller uh, or Mitch Miller is the person who I heard this from, but there are very various people that I've heard repeat this and it is super true. So by the extension, it will increase the perceived value of the main offer, right? So examples, our main offer at selffieldsystems.io is a done for you systems and infrastructure processes and teams that we execute in a correct order and a fashion within the protocol that we've created that leads to more booked meetings, which then uh, ultimately, you know, leads to you being able to reinvest money back into infrastructure, reinvest money back into business operations, reinvest money back into the correct uh, training for sales teams, reinvest money back into engaging and to making it rain. So, and then specifically, you know, the back end additions is one on one Slack channels with our head coach. Well, we have one or two specific different, you know, you have people that you can onboard and hire and work with you to having specific coaches on board, right? People that are industry leaders. So, this is what makes this super important, right? And we have our coaching call framework or the initial, uh, you know, sessions, uh, workshop sessions that we have bi-weekly, right, uh, two to three times a week we have these calls. And then the bonus is, this is, you know, the bonus is that this case is, let me rephrase, the bonus is that this case is what all of our competitors offer, their core offer, for an example. So for us, this is the bonus, right, the additional thing that you get as a client, and that's what makes this effective. Because if you, literally, like I said, if you go and look at the industry and you go and look at specific um, uh, consulting, uh, you know, services, you will, you will exactly see what I just explained there. So, and in a format of the, the picture displayed here, right? The more uh, in-depth uh, approach where we actually spend time with you and we actually make sure that your needle moves, right? So now that we've got, you know, the offer locked in, we can now start to create the specific message around your offer. So before 
you write an, your, your, you know, your word for word offer, you have to do market research. So most people start writing before they even know who they are writing to, which ultimately results in their messaging being completely off and never converting, right? So the results don't come from your writing. They come from knowing who you are talking to and what it is that you specifically need, at least that they're, you know, you know industry-specific knowledge, the, the, the problem that you are addressing, right? So the key three areas of market research, these are psychographic factors, which is wants, hopes, dreams, desires, fears, and what keeps them up at night, right? What if you could wave a wand? What do they wish? Uh, what do they wish to have? You know, wished away, right? So, what makes them tick, etc., right? What words do they use? You know, their their language, their initial slang within inside of the specific niche vertical, right? So, general market behaviors. There are only two reasons why people do anything, and you can clearly see this in this one of this picture I tried to dictate here, right? So we have two reasons, right? So within evolutionary psychology, we either do to optimize for, we either act in optimizing for survival or we act in optimizing for replication, which is good old evolutionary psychology, right? So we want what others have or want, right? And if because of social media, we're brainwashed into wanting things quicker within the whole dopaminergic cycle or the, you know, that dopamine spikes, all of that stuff just quickly wires our brains to want stuff quicker. And the initial survival instinct we have, because firstly, everyone falls into this trap because 90% of people use social media, right? And you want to specifically, you, you want to be the producer, not the consumer, right? So the survival instinct, we have social proof, uh, testimonials, uh, that it's basically it can form as a stampede, right? So people are lazy and they put off decisions. We have a finite amount of energy, so a, it's, it's survival, right? The survival instinct is to protect that energy and to figure out ways that you can optimize. So that's also, I've, uh, I've recently heard someone say this, I can't remember who specifically this was, but he specifically said that uh, people don't want to study for the test, they, they want the cheat sheet, right? They, they, they want the answers. So if you can provide it to people, then that's what they will buy because they want the solution, right? So we are motivated by greed and self-interest. No one cares about you in your marketing. They care about what's in it for them, right? No one cares. Uh, oh yeah, here's this thing. No one cares uh, about what they need to study. If they can have the cheat sheet, that's what they want. That's, this is where this is coming in anyway. So the only, they only care about the context and what you can do for them specifically, right? So why inherently have low self-esteem? Because, you know, we're motivated by, you know, sneaking one over the next man. You know, that's why this whole, uh, there, there are dark energy and there's light energy. And when you know how to mix these two, at the right times and you don't and you know not how to lean over to the other one too much then there will be a, uh, a dichotomy that you need to manage right so again so unfair advantages you shouldn't use to get uh so you never should use unfair advantages to get yourself ahead right so we are easily persuaded by the opinions of others so this is this is true because uh steve jobs said if uh if they think you are rich they think you are right, right? So that is something to keep in the back of your mind when it comes to decision making. We will unconsciously give ourselves to someone who has a stronger uh, sense of self, um, you know, like that self-confidence. If you seek that and you see someone progressively put that out, you're gonna want to know how he's doing it, right? So in marketing, as long as we are sound sure about ourselves, we will influence them through our beliefs. We secretly want to be led, right? Most people are walking around with their umbilical cord uh, in their hands looking for somewhere to plug it in. You know what I mean? So um, authority, we specifically give up power to others who, you know, that, they're, that have this sense of power and authority because, you know, that's what we want. So we want to learn it, right? So it's not necessarily always the, the right way to go about it. So consistency. Humans will remain consistent with what they believe, even if, if they know that they're wrong, sometimes till the death, right? As a marketer, this is a great point of leverage because 
as soon as you can get someone to agree on a certain like value or belief that's required to buy in a product and you can prove that not buying your product or service goes against the agreement of this initial belief, it will force them into the box and they will buy. A amazing example of this is if you look at this whole Liver King, uh, you know, stunt, he is his marketing team and his his brains, they're pushing him to do all of these com comed you know, these these acts of looking like a comedian or, you know, he's he's strategically doing that so that he can optimize you to buy more of his stuff. If anything is ever said about no, no, that's not just go and look at the amount of companies that this guy actually has and they're all in in the line of him you know somehow shoving you towards buying the whole his whole whatever i'm not going to say too many things but you get the idea because it's it's so well executed that people are irritated by him people are like they 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 will say he's on steroids they will say this they will say that and all that just leads to more conversation which then gets the liver king right to to do good <laughs> it's, it's really great that's masterfully put together so consistency right humans will remain consistent uh okay we, we've went to that uh most people hate to be wrong right so they they most people can't push the ego out of the way so if you want to change someone's mind you you never do it by telling them that they're wrong you do this by creating friction and conflict uh, andrew tate liver king right then the way that they say things aren't aren't necessarily wrong, but they always back it up with some kind of a fact, right? And I'm giving you these examples because these are fresh. So always agree with them and show them another perspective in front of that, like uh, in the form of questions and show them that the ideas as if they were their own ideas or thought of themselves, right? So we're, you know, we're, we're dying for approval from others. So, and we desperately care about what other people think or say about this. I don't care what you say. There will be an element of where you will measure that. I, it doesn't matter if it's in quiet time. It doesn't matter if you say, you know, like, I don't care who you are. There will be an element where that will influence you. But it, you can, it, it'll only influence you once you allow it, but it will always be there. If a bunch of people is saying a bunch of negative stuff about you and there's no real positive feedback coming, in a way, if you don't have a mechanism of talking to other people that will affect you, right? So if you can like, if you can show your marketing that the, so if you can show in your marketing that buying your product or service, you know, it will get approval from those that care about uh, them most will certainly, then they will buy, right? It's like, it's like an example of why people go out and buy like uh, the Nike branded shoe, right? Or, or let's say like it's a, it's a Yeezy or something, right? It, uh, there's some kind of a, a Gucci, like there's some kind of a something that will happen to you. If you go out and buy it, people will associate, oh, a lot of money. Or people will associate that, hey, this guy is balling or, or whatever the situation might be. And th the same context with uh, this whole thing, right? So if you can show in your marketing that by buying your product or service, it will get approval from those that care about uh, that care about you mostly and they will most certainly buy so now flipping this thing back is that this all comes down to this thing called the status delta but again that's also a, a a topic for another time so scarcity right so within this uh whole scarcity effect is that most people live in a state of consistent like scarcity right because there's always a need for more right so that could lead to that and also wanting more but because of this, we're conditioned to hoard things that, you know, may help us with our survival. So this is why people don't buy your product or service because they can't afford it or, you know, it's not right for them. They think, you know, that the money that they will exchange for your product and service will help them with their survival or, you know, more so than the product that they're buying from you will. So this specifically means that they can't really, there's no R, like the, they can't do the logical math in their brain, giving you this money and then working with you, that type of effect, right? So people will do more to avoid pain than they will ever do to gain pleasure, right? That's, that's a fact. So people won't ever spend money to avoid something from happening to them, but they will do, they, like they will drop their bank accounts to remove or fix a problem once it occurs, right? So this is also where uh, Dr. David Buss mentioned this, uh, and he said that people they don't much they don't change much after 25 years old. 
how do they learn is they learn through traumatic experiences and this is where this could hook onto this point as a sub bullet right so the within the market sophistication we have emotions associated with your offer so your messaging must be okay let me rephrase your messaging must enter the conversation that's occurring within the mind of your market the way that we do this is via knowing their sophistication so we have most aware, we have product aware, we have solutions aware, and we have problem aware, and then we have unaware. So with most aware, the market knows that the product, specifically the name and the price, et cetera, like something like I, like Nike, right? So they know about it, or someone you've already had a sales call with, but didn't close, right? So they're, they're, they're most aware of you, they know what you do, they have uh, seen specific uh, things that you do. So then you have product aware. The market knows that your product is like they, they know about your product, but is unaware of the price. So they may or may not know about what you specifically do, but they've seen it somewhere. Right. And they are kind of like, you know, the, they're kind of aware that it solves a certain problem. However, they don't know how it correlates to the pricing. Right. So then you have solutions aware in a market. They know that there is some kind of a solution to their problem or somewhere down the line. And if they don't, uh, you know, if they if they don't at least know or want a solution to their problem, then this is where uh, most of you, like you know, will fall into as as it makes up a large portion of the overall market. So if you know there is a solution, or you ought to keep your you know advertising extremely you know benefit driven, and if they don't, uh, and if you don't need to focus on educating rather than you know selling them, right? So. That's what you need to focus on, essentially. So then we have problem aware. So your market may or may not feel any specific pain or may or, you know, they may they might have a problem. They might not have a problem as of yet. So if you don't feel pain, you, you don't know that you have a problem. So then you focus on creating pain or the problem first. So bringing that awareness to the market, right? So if you like, okay, so if you don't feel the pain or know that, you, you know, you have a pain, then you don't need to, you know, speak about the initial benefit. So that's where, you know, a more uh, educational piece will drop. So unaware here, this is where you're creating a complete new market. So I don't recommend playing in this market at all, because within your market sophistication, you also want to find out where a spectrum of the one to 10 being one being like, you know, you completely blown away by your offer because they've never seen it before and 10 being like, you know, they've been scanned, ten, scammed 10 times and, you know, the product and service is exactly like yours. It, it is something, you know, that's very oversaturated. There's people starting these type of things every single day. So example in the course industry, right? That would be a high 10 or something like uh, the, the specific uh, industry where people teach other people how to trade, right? We have some customers um, in that industry and we've been able to do exceptionally well with them because of all of these things that we're going through, right? So the copywriting here, we have the headline. This is some a little bit of a formula, but we have a headline which is ultra specific. And then we have unique, useful and urgent. So this is where uh, the the you know, it it will draw it will draw down to your specific market and how you use these. But it, it is like um, it's pre it's pertinent to your market, right? So uh, you have the hooks and looks, right? So specifically with hooks and looks, this could be yourself. If you're if you're an attractive gentleman, if you're an attractive lady, then you can use that to your advantage within things you do. But it, the most aware of this is as when people use some kind of a car in the background, or you know, you know, a hook is sometimes just referred to an attention grabber, right? The Maybach attention grabber, the Ferrari attention grabber, right? It is the element of your messaging that transitions the reader from doing the initial task to actively wanting to consume your message. So it is unique, right? It speaks, it speaks to the wants and the needs and the desires of your niche. So it, it's also specifically enters the conversation already occurring within the market awareness. So it highlights the benefits, which is important. And then the element of time. So if then we drop over to the promise, we have the highlights that benefits of the pro like of the, the prospect consuming the respective piece of the content, VSL, et cetera, right? So it speaks to a defined result as if towards the line of the prospect's desires, right? 
So it then fulfills a deep, deep desire. It proves a unique mechanism and it solves an urgent problem and it ejects that FOMO, right? If you don't buy this right now, you know, I'm not sure if it will be on the market again. So specific secondary and tertiary benefits. So we have outcomes of products and services, and then we have the building of the irresistible offer that cuts through the noise, right? It just like zooms through the noise. So here we have FLB, so that your ads will generate at least a um, at, at least a three x higher, you know, click through rate. So then by the the SNTLB, for an example. By extension, it increases your ROI by at least 2x, which means that you can scale further, right? So with an, uh, an, an advertising example, that's, that's what this is referring to, right? So we have the cost here, which is without an irresistible offer, like you'll continue to be pulled in with your you know, competitors and you'll never receive an outstanding result because there will be so many of the, uh, of the, of the same things, right? And by extension... To continue, you go down this current path you're on You will, like, with no predictable way to get clients and grow your business to where you are you know, always in demand of, right? So there's, you're not really hitting the needle. The, the needle is not really moving. What doesn't matter what your service or business is, right? So the rule of five, we want new, only, big, simple, and fast, right? So the rule of five refers to the idea of always including one or five of the above ideas into your copy, ads, VSL, or posts, right? So three prone, why? So why should you, like, why should people listen to you? They only care about you in the context of what you can do for them. They don't care about anything else, right? So what is it, what is it in for me? So what, what, why we're motivated you know, it's specifically because we're motivated by greed and self-interest. You know, how can this help me? How can this help me survive? How can this help me get a better girlfriend? So he, here, think in terms of scarcity. So remember, we are delaying the decision making because of the survival instinct, right? People will wait 17 moon cycles. They know they can afford it. They know you can help them, but they will wait 17 moon cycles before they initially pull the trigger, right? Uh, if your sales process is a little bit wiggled. So realize that anyone on earth can make a big, bold and bodacious claim. You know, even someone's grandma can, right? But there's only, you know, a few, you know, select few that can prove their point beyond reasonable doubt and specifically deliver. So the goal here is to make the biggest claims that you can while being able to prove the truth and remain the, like, through the function of the price because you will make this bold claim, you will get this conversation started and people will be like, yeah, whatever, bullshit, man, bullshit. And then you will prove it, right? And then that's the, when the wow effect happens. So proof elements could hold case studies, experience, accolades, logical proof, people you have worked with, right? Um, and those are just, you know, that's just what it is. So then we have perceived uh, plus the reality. Well, the perception plus the reality, right? So your niche will have limiting beliefs and will have a perceived problem that are holding them back. So for an example, some objections that you can have, you know, no one will listen to me because I'm only 20. I can't do X because I'm not experienced enough. I can't sign clients because my niche is so oversaturated, right? So you open up the real reason behind why you're stuck and you show them the truth, you know, the reality. This is also a unique, useful insight, right? So a UUI. So PS, always confirm the suspicions and delegate the blame towards why they couldn't do it. And then you show them the new reason, right? So new opportunities. So I say new reason because it could be new or it could be something new that you created, right? So new opportunities. The opportunity should always act in the reason uh, why what your niche has tried hasn't worked before, right? Then you look at the initial mechanism of the delivery. The mechanism is the number one way to implement on your new opportunity. It should act as the most direct, simple, safe, and guaranteed path to their deepest desired and specific outcome, right? So the new opportunity is the end destination. The mechanism is the vehicle that gets them there, right? So this mechanism is the delivery of the transformation. So it's it's taking a spaceship. Would you take a spaceship, right? W would you would you take a rowboat? Would you want to hop on a cruise boat? So, would you pop a pill? That kind of things, right? So the thesis is: if you, I can make people believe that the funnels are 
the key to online business success, or for example, someone like Russell Brunson that will only say you're one, okay, well, that's this, this example, that you're only one funnel away, right? Then, you know, you will have to buy click funnels because that's where you get funnels, right? So all over the objections and the concerns become irrelevant and they have to give you money because you are the only one with the solution. That's what your market message is. You're the only one addressing this. So your current solution is what is the current approach to your niche and uh, what, are, what are they using and trying to achieve their desired outcomes? Why don't they, you know, why don't they like them and what is the specific issue for them, right? So then the handcuffs. So uh, there's always going to be handcuffs, right? Objections, limiting beliefs, unless you break the handcuffs, you absolutely break them and you, you know, you, you, you provide logical reasoning and emotional answers to unlock them. These handcuffs can also be surrounding your personality as well. Now, guys, I, I know this is a lot, but, but bear with me. We're almost done. So the goal here is to get one funnel working and scale that to run 100K to 500K. You don't want to have multiple funnels running at once, um, you know, if you're below 500K, as this adds to so much operational complexity and it slows you down you will create that uh, drag, right? You don't want drag. So here's the biggest tip I can give you. Always 10x the funnel you are currently running. So there is, you know, this is where scale is because it's not in adding more stuff to your business, right? Or more channels to your offer. That's where people go wrong because types of funnels you can get is stuff like Facebook group funnels, VSL funnels, outbound end-to-end -end funnels, right? And then you get stuff like when we break it down within the Facebook group funnels, you can get... This is the funnel that gives you the most breathing room. So you always, you know, um, you know, recommend, we always recommend you starting here because uh, th there are essentially the easiest, right? So we have ads, we have the top of funnel, which is ads, opt-in and group, you know, here, over here, we have this here. You have top of funnel, which is ads, opt-in and then group join. The ads for Facebook group funnels are pretty easy. Like you need a very compelling opt-in offer, something of extreme value to your ideal customer that they can't just get anywhere to get them to opt in, right? So whatever you give for free, you must like over deliver in value as that, which is the primary driver for people wanting to book a call with you or wanting to do business with you. Because that's just like, it's in the nurturing process, right? Upon an opt-in, you ask for their name, email address, phone number, the more info you can have on the person, the better. So within five minutes of them opting in for your S, like opting in, you either SMS them, send, like give them a dial. So if they don't answer outbound, then you specifically dial them, right? The SMS and the outbound dial is optimized to set out like within the sales calls. So upon a group join, once you accept someone, you, you accept their request into the group, you instantly send them a DM, right? Using, a, using the script, which is optimized for your set, because this is where the thing comes in. If you just use a script that's copy and pasted within your niche industry and vertical, it just won't work. It will be working for one month and then everyone will be using it and then you will be stranded, my friend. So this is why this is so important. That's why you need someone to help you do this. That is the only real hammer point I will make there. So once they're in the group, you want to nurture them with your content until they buy. So here is a content calendar you should follow up in your group. So you have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Monday, you want a personal goal, you know, you achieve. So a strategy that you're planning um, or something that you're using. So recent wins with personal customer or client. Tuesday, you can provide a little bit of value with no uh, ulterior motive, right? Comment X to get valuable thing. Uh, doc used for this content, free training, resource. Do these five steps to get X. So then you can also have a Facebook Live, which is peer value and um, maybe a call to action or not, but it's peer value, focused on value. So here you have your action-based poach, which you deliver something of value. You move the conversation over to a book call. It's where it's channeled, right? Then you have a direct pitch. So Thursday, we look at recent wins, right? You can also click the link here. If you want to make a copy of this document, you can click this link here also. Um, I, I, I also highly, highly guarantee you to check out the links down below. Uh, this document will be able for, uh, for download down below. You can make a copy, use this stuff inside of your business and um, yeah, use it. Uh, let me know if it helps you. So Friday, you can have live training. You can have customer or client interviews. You can have KPIs for Facebook group funnel. You can have 20 to 40% within your opt-in rate, which you want to optimize for if you're not around there. Then if you look at the 50% click-through rate uh, on a Facebook group, on the access page, etc. right? 
So then we have a 90% of those who click through on the Facebook group and specifically request a join. So then we have a VSL funnel. This is the hardest funnel to crack, but once you crack it, it gives you most of your scale. So start with a Facebook group funnel, and once you've scaled, you just pop over to you know um, uh, the the VSL funnel, which will get you around, dependable on your ticket price and what you sell and how you deliver, to 50 to 500k per month. So you know this is when we look at an ad to an opt-in, VSL to a booking, right? S sounds easy, easier than it's you know it sounds easy. Anyway, so then we have a similar similarity to the Facebook group funnel upon the opt-in where the numbers, where, where the number one thing is to increase the efficiency of the funnel is to install setters who do outbound dials and SMSs and who specifically focus on opt-in. So the outbound dialing and the SMSing or the VSL, you know, is to optimize for the VSL typically, right? So we perform better than a Facebook group funnel because of the prospect is usually more qualified as they're opting in for a more specific offer rather than having a freebie like in a Facebook group funnel, right? So all on the VSL, we so prior to creating the VSL, you you must have an offer for your customers you haven't seen or heard before, and this is what's going to prime the delivery of your whole funnel, right? So from ad to booked calls, etc. So we have the awareness and the sophisticated market. So we have aware and sophisticated market. So the offer based. Uh, instead of the like benefit based, right? So then we drop down into calling out your ideal prospect. You state the offer, you back up your claim, uh, you pitch for your call and you create simultaneous explanations why everything they've tried or that they're trying is not working or what you have is different through insights, right? And then we restate your results, right? We restate the claim, we restate the pitch, backing up your claims. So KPIs for VSL funnel is around 25 to 40% within how you optimize for the opt-in rate. Then you have a 60% plus, which is, you know, a watch rate for your VSL, right? And then we have a 10% click-through rate for your booking page. And then we have an 80% plus for those who land on your booking page. So then we look at outbound end-to-end -end funnel. If you have any kind of done for you offer or a service for a market which is difficult or easy to you know reach via ads an outbound end-to-end -end funnel is your best you know for this offer so if you if you can't really use ads that's what i meant there right so then we're looking at lead sourcing collecting and you know cleaning the info name email addresses numbers uh, creation of the personalized first line sending software like a uh, mail snake lamb list active campaign so you should have two VAs for lead sourcing and a first line writer and an outbound uh, messenger, right? So this is where all the systemization comes in. So side note on the funnels, specifically channels and Slack, right? Okay, so the number one mistake I see with uh, coaches and consultants is they get shiny object syndrome. And as soon as they pass 50K to 100K per month, they wanna move on to the next thing. They think that what got them there will get them you know, to the next thing there. So but with the client acquisition and scale, what will get you here essentially is not the next thing that will get you there because you have to 10x the volume within your current funnel. You need to focus on that because an example, a customer who is a trading coach recently, one of the uh, clients that we work with, right? He was doing anywhere between $1,000 to $2,000 within a fluctuation per month, never really consistent, right? So when he joined us, he was doing some kind of a Facebook group funnel, but his metrics weren't the best and his profit margins were pretty bad, right? His, his, the way that he was pricing and the value that was delivered and all of the things that he was doing, you know, it was, it, his metrics were pretty bad, but because his marketing was so expensive, right? So we never changed his funnel. All we did was we increased the efficiency of his ad. We wanted him specifically to have all of the pre-positioning to have air all the infrastructure, to have all the systems. And we specifically knew with his industry vertical, we just needed to get his message in front of more people, right? So Facebook group funnel specifically is what we still kept. Facebook group funnel by developing a stronger opt-in offer, a more valuable offer. And in, in his industry, Telegram is hot. So it was a, a Telegram group funnel, uh, niche specific, and a few other tweaks, right, that we did. So now this month he's on track to hit 40K, right? Now, he's already done 30K, but he's now on track to hit 40. He specifically messaged me yesterday saying he wanted to change again to another funnel so that he can scale past 40K. And I just said to him, bro, listen, you just need to increase the ad spend. That is it. 
Because at the end of the day, with an industry vertical, niche specific verticals, there are funnels that will work. There are tweaks that will work. But at the end of the day, it's about the volume, the, the specific message and the, the things that you can have. And you can actually get this message in front of more people, industry niche specific. That is what will work, right? And if it's working, why do you want to break? Why, do we, why would you want to mess with it, right? Because only if it breaks, then you need to you know, revisit the blacksmith, as we like to call it. We have this whole process that we go through month in and month out where we revisit the blacksmith. We do this every second month with uh, the business that, that we work with, with our own businesses. We go over this whole, uh, it's a sub protocol that we go through called the blacksmith protocol, which we then fix everything. If there's something broken, we go over and we find that thing that's broken or that needs an update, right? So guys, this has been Jean-Jacques from Self-Built Systems. Thank you so much for your time and your attention. I will say this, please go check out some of the docs below. I do highly recommend you checking out some of the docs below. They will be of massive benefit to you on your journey, you know, in growing your business and if, if, whether you're just starting your business or growing your business, it doesn't matter. Check out the docs below. Let me know what, what you think about this video. Please leave a like and a comment in the comment section down below if you did enjoy this video. So uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it from my side. I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.